Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do this problem without using a spreadsheet um, and just using the, um, the time value and money calculator. Um, and so I'm just going to go over how all these values um, are generated and how we can look through this question. And then in a separate video, I'll go over how they explain it using the spreadsheet. Um, just one thing to be aware of, the, the spreadsheet is kind of an advanced thing and it's not really going to be ever asked. Um, on, a, on a quiz or a test because you won't have access to the application to do that. Um, you just really need to be aware of, of how it works using the time value and money um, calculator. So the first thing let's do is let's go over what's the difference here between these three terms, buying, renting, or leasing. So the whole idea here is that if you are renting or leasing um, a property or something like a vehicle, is that you you pay monthly okay and but the whole idea is that you have no ownership of um, this item okay at the end of your lease or your rental term so you don't own anything the other um, situation is that when you buy something and when you buy something of this quantity or this size okay you usually need a loan Okay, or in most cases, you have to take out a larger loan. So in this case, that's going to be a mortgage. Okay, and they're calculated a little bit differently in terms of um, payments and, and interest there. But over time, what you do is you increase your ownership stake, okay, in this. And that's something called, that's what's called equity in the property. Um, and again, typically, these are terminology things that you'll hear about whenever you have a a property like a like a house condo or land so equity is what you're increasing when you pay down the mortgage okay this is equity is something that you own um, that has value and that is basically accumulating um, wealth in, over time by by paying down the the mortgage okay so what we have we have two situations here so we have a person one here randy who buys something and he's got all these terms and all this fairly complicated situation set up here okay and then his brother here can't afford to buy something because he can't usually make what the down payment that's needed so all he can do is rent okay so he's in the position here where he's going to pay something monthly he never gets any ownership but it's very straightforward to calculate his cost okay and the whole idea is here that they're going to stay in these properties for five years and we want to sort of see in the end what what is the better buy Okay, so first let's do let's do Ken's situation here. Okay, so Ken just decides that he's going to rent something for um, five years. Okay, so he has got a five-year rental. Okay, and what we need to do is that whenever you're pay, taking something on payments, you usually pay it monthly. Okay, so a five-year rental works out to five times 12 numbers of payments. So that's 60 payments. Okay. And then each payment in this case here is a very straight $2,250. So his total cost here is not um, very complicated. It's just $2,550 times 60 payments, okay, which is equal to a total of $135,000. Okay. But at the end of that term, he owns nothing. So all he does is pay the money out. Um, he gets use of the of the property or the place, but he owns nothing in the end. Okay, all that money has gone to somebody else, and um, which could be a person like Randy who owns it. Okay, and then there's the calculation of what they own is a lot different. Okay, so that's just the thing to remember here that he owns um, he owns nothing at the end. Okay, or he has. The way we would describe it is he has something that says he's got no equity or no equity stake. Okay, so Randy does it a little bit differently. Okay, and this is where it's more complicated. So Randy's going to make a purchase. Okay, and in order to purchase something of this size, um, there's a few things that you have to know here when you're purchasing the properties. Okay, so the first thing you have is you have a down payment. Right, so a down payment is what you have to put up to get into and control that property. And it's usually a percentage. Um, re in real life, it's anywhere between five and 20%. Okay, that's the standard um, down payment for real estate. Then you have a monthly loan amount, okay, or the monthly mortgage cost. So a loan, 
for a property is usually going to be a mortgage, which has just got a defined way that you pay it off in terms of principal and interest. Okay, and then also that you have to account for is you have to account for fees and taxes. So no matter what you buy, you always have property taxes, um, and that's true in real life. And if you buy um, certain properties, um, you have to pay um, a maintenance fee or a strata fee on top of that. So that's a monthly charge that you have. Okay, so let's just kind of go through the numbers here and see what he's going to do. So his down payment. Okay, so we're just going to do Randy here. So his down payment is pretty straightforward to calculate. It's going to be the price of the property, which is 395000 Okay, times in this case 15%, so that's 0.15, which means he has to come up with a total of um, $59,250, okay, in order to, to purchase this property. So that's money that you have to put up front. <clears throat> now his mortgage... Well, we'll do the mortgage amount later because we do need to use the, the time value money calculator and I'll show the screenshot for that. But then his fees, okay, are fairly straightforward to calculate. This is fees and taxes. Um, he has a total of $500 a month, okay, that he's got to pay. And remember, they're going to stay there for five years. Okay, so that's, again, 60 payments. Okay, so if we want to break it out, we're going to do 5 times 12, 5 years times 12 payments per year, okay, which is a total of $30,000. Okay, so that's his fees that he's going to pay um, for that. Now, how do you do the mortgage payment? Okay, so the mortgage payment, you can't really calculate in your head or you can't do it with any simple arithmetic because it's based on the compound interest formula and you need a really a special application to do it fast because otherwise they the the, the actual equation for this which they don't really show in the course um, is just it's just complicated and it's based on really a set of of tables and chain calculation so the mortgage to do this you need to use the tvm application okay and this is something that you should be able to figure out and know how to use um uh, especially that you wouldn't be ever asked to do this via a spreadsheet but you would be asked to do this possibly using the tvm application so <clears throat> we just need to know what are the certain parameters that you put into this thing okay so the first thing is something called pv which is called present value okay so present value is equal to just basically the loan amount that you're taking out. So this is actually going to be the, the value of the property minus the down payment. Okay, so it's going to be 395,000, which is the value of the property. Then you subtract the down payment, and which is 59,250. And this is the loan that you have to get from the bank. Okay, so you're gonna have to get a loan worth $335,000 and seven three hundred thirty five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars okay that's the what's called the present value of the loan okay the interest rate okay which i think they label as ir is just equal to the rate interest rate in a year stated yearly so they always are going to give you an interest rate um, based in what's called per annum okay which means per year so they're going to charge 4.25 percent interest per year Okay, the um, <clears throat> future value, FV. So what does that mean in the time value application? Well, the future value is what you want the, the loan to be worth at the end of the what's called the amortization period. Okay, so when you're first trying to figure out the mortgage payment, okay, you want your future value to be zero. Okay, this, is, this means the loan is paid off. So the loan is paid in full. All right, so FV is going to become zero. The payment, okay, is equal to the question mark that we're trying to find here. So this is what we're being asked to calculate using that application. So we're just going to leave that as a question mark for right now. Okay, the uh, payment per year, okay, or what they call P slash Y, is how many payments you're going to make in a year. So 
you pay monthly with all these loans, so it's always 12. Okay, and then there's something called the compound per year, the compounding periods per year. So if we look carefully at the question, they say it's compounded semi-annually. So semi-annually means that we're going to do it two times a year. If it was compounded annually, it would just be once. Um, if it was compounded quarterly, it would be four times a year. Okay, so we're doing it compound that's two times per year. Okay, and then the last thing we have to know is what are the periods? How many payment periods are there in total? Okay, so this loan, which the way mortgages are structured, is they're usually taken for 15, 20, or sometimes 30 years. Okay, um, most commonly in real life, it's actually 25 years, but we're using 20 years in this example. Okay, so that means you're going to take the loan for 20 years, but you're going to pay 12 times a month. So it's going to be 20 times 12, which is 240. Okay, so you have to take all this information, okay, and you're going to plug it into the time value application. So the one that we can use, or that I can show you here, and I just have a screenshot of it, is the one that's linked in the course, which is the web version of it. Okay, so in here, what you can see is you would you launch this on the website and you type in present value, which is 335. Okay, the future value is zero because that's the loan is going to be paid off. Periods is 240. The interest rates 425. Payments per year 12 and two. And then the only thing that you have to solve is the payment amount. So that's the question mark. So you would just click that. Okay, and then what you would get in here is the payment would be equal to a value and they showed as a negative number because that means money is being paid out would be two thousand seventy two dollars and forty three cents okay so you, this is this is the mortgage payment that comes out of the bank every month okay so that's what this payment amount would be when you hit the question mark okay so out of that what we figured out here is how much you're paying every how much is um randy paying every month in terms of his uh mortgage all right so what we can look at now here is we have something we can kind of sort of get a total cost here so remember we're staying here for five years so what is randy's total cost Okay, so that's made up of a few values here. <clears throat> okay, it's made up of his mortgage payment, which is $2,072.43. But we have to multiply that by 60 because he's staying here for five years. Okay, so that's one thing. I'm just going to do this in two brack in some brackets here in, in a vertical column. Then he pays his monthly fees, okay, which is $500 a month. But again, he's also going to got to do that 60 times. Okay, so that's another cost on top of that. Okay, and then we have to add his down payment because we can't forget that. Remember, he paid out of pocket to get into this property $59,250. Okay, so if you plug all this into your calculator and just do the arithmetic for it, you should get a value of $213,595.80. Okay, so this is his cost to carry this property or to get into this property and stay there for five years. Okay, that's his total cost for five years. So I'll just put that in a box here. All right, so, so far, um, you know, if we take a look at it, his brother paid $135,000. Okay, now he's paid $213,000. So... Is that something that we can compare as seeing which is the best deal? Okay, and the answer is not quite because we have to figure out what do we do at the end of the five years? Okay, so I'm just going to go down to a new page here and I've got a new screen. I'm just going to move this to the bottom a little bit. So come back to that in a bit, bit here. Okay, so at the end... of five years okay what happens okay well we have to close out our transactions here okay so randy has to sell his property and ken just has to leave okay so ken just exits 
Okay, he has a lease where he's renting. So all he has to do is just say he's done. He's not going to pay it out anymore. And then his total out-of-pocket cost for five years is just going to be the basic $135,000. Okay, Randy has to sell. Okay, and when he sells, um, he has to sell his property, pay out the mortgage, Okay, and then whatever's left over, you would apply that to the cost that he's already incurred, okay, which we know was $213,000. Okay, and then the difference there is going to be something that we can then compare to Ken because this is going to be his net cost. Okay, so we have to find his net cost. Find the net cost for staying. Okay, so it's a little bit more complicated with this. Okay, so the first thing you need to do in order for Randy to sell something here is that you have to know what is the property value. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, and then you have to know um, how much does he owe on the loan. Okay, so this is the part where they use the spreadsheet and we're not going to do that. I'm just going to use this. We're just going to do this using the time value money calculator in this case. Okay, so let's do, um, we'll do the property value here first. So I believe the prop property value is a little bit weird in this question because it tells you that, uh, I'm just going to move this down here. It tells you that the property actually depreciated, which in real life, property values tend to increase because the properties are become more and more scarce over time all right so this is kind of in a little bit contradictory to what you would be seeing right now but in any case okay if we we're going to do property value in one here we have a depreciating value okay so that means we have to apply that compound interest formula in a way that calculates the depreciation Okay, so depreciation, okay, is basically the subtraction part of the compound interest formula. So they used what's something called the final amount. Okay, I'm going to use a different term here, just called future value. So this is the future value of the depreciating property. Okay, is going to be equal to, as shown in there, it's principal times 1 minus R over N, okay, to the NT. And we'll just put in the, the values here that we you would have to plug into a calculator. So the, the print the starting value of the property is 395,000. Okay, so that's our principal. The rate of depreciation is 3% a year, so that's 3.03. .03. And depreciation or properties are valued once per year. So the number of periods that you would um, look at this this calculation it just happens once per year and then n and t so the t n is just one it's once per year but we have a total of five years so we do one times five okay and if we plug this in and do your calculation because you have an exponent here you get three hundred and thirty nine thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety four cents Okay, so that's the future value of the property. So it's it's lost money or it's lost equity. Okay, so it's lost value. Okay, that means that equity, that difference has gone down and that's money that's coming out of the owner's um, basically balance statement or the equity that you wouldn't get because you can't sell it for the original price, all right? So that's how you do the depreciating property. Now, but how much do you have here on the loan okay so the, the the value of the loan what we're really asking here is the value of the loan okay um, at the end of 60 months okay so because remember we're selling after 60 months so this is typically how these real estate um, uh, questions work you never Unless you're staying there for the, 20, the full 20 years and you pay the loan off to zero, okay, most, and actually even in real life, most people never stay in the property until the loan goes to zero. They stay for a certain number of years, okay, which is less than how long the loan was actually structured for, in this case, 20 years. 
Okay, so let's just go through our values here again. So the PV value, the present value, okay, is the value of the property that uh, of the original loan that you took out with. So you started, or you had to get the bank to lend you $335,750, just like in the other question, okay? The interest rate stays the same, it's still 4.25%. Now the future value, FV, is what we want to find, okay? Because we want to find the future value at the end of 60 months. So this is something that we are going to leave as a question mark. Now. We do know how much we're paying every month for the mortgage, okay? So the payment amount, we do know because we calculated it in the previous question, okay? It's twenty. It's $2,072.43. So you would have to use that payment value in this version of the calculation. Okay, the payments per year or PY is still 12. Okay, the compounding um, units per year, the compounding frequency is two, semi-annually. Now the periods, okay, which is refers to really like how the length of the loan and how many payments you're going to make for the length of this loan. Okay, so it's not 240 in this case anymore. It's just the five years that we're holding. So it's 60 months. Okay, and so that's the period value. So now if I bring this screen this part of the thing up here okay and you would use this in the web calculation okay you would open up this this that that uh, app that screen application that web app put in 335750 for the present value future value leave blank periods are 60 425 for the rate negative 207243 because that's again it's a payment amount um, it's negative, it means it's coming out. Payments are 12 and 2. And then if you hit the question mark, okay, you will see the future value. Okay, it comes out as a negative number. Okay, that just means that it's still, it's still, it's negative because it shows as the amount owing because the loan isn't complete yet. Okay, so the future value using this TVM calculation is equal to negative 276,177.41. That just means that's the balance outstanding. Okay, so this is what they use the spreadsheet for in order to calculate that. Okay, so once we have this information, okay, we need to we still need to figure out Randy's net cost here. So we do know the property value and we do know the value on the loan. Okay, so what happens here with all this data that we've got? All right, so to figure this out in his final um, final amount here, we need to know a um, couple of things here. We sell the property, or he does. Okay, now how much can he get for the property at, at market value? Well, you can't get 335 for it, okay? The most you're going to get According to this calculation here is you're going to get $339,199.94. Okay, that's what you sell the property. But remember, you have a loan with the bank. So that means you have to subtract the, the balance of the loan. Okay, so you get a chunk of money when you sell it, but you're not free and clear with it. Okay, you have to pay back the $276,177.41. Okay, and that difference is what you have left over okay which seems like a good deal because in this case here okay we we the property was worth more than the loan okay so you get a total of sixty three thousand dollars and twenty two cents um which is goes in this is what you pocket okay this is so this is the balance that you get so in your bank account this goes into the bank goes into the bank okay this is almost think of it it's almost like the profit you made on the property okay because the loan was was only worth 276 and you could sell the property for 339 which was lower than your original price but this is the amount that goes into the bank at the end of your 60 months. Now, is that what your real cost is? Okay, so his net cost though, okay, because you have to factor in everything is. So remember, he paid over the course of five years, a total of $213,595.80. 
Okay, that's how much was paid out over six years. Over five years, sorry, 60 months. Okay, now out of that, okay, we did um, accrue some equity in the property, okay, to the amount of $63,022, okay, so, and 53 cents. So you have to take out that equity because that's, that's money that was paid um, through the mortgage, but the way it works is part of the, the mortgage value um, belongs to the owner because it's it's kind of like a savings account. Like it builds up over time. Okay. And even though you're paying that money out to the bank, it's going to, um, you pay some, some gets paid in interest, but the amount that you're paying off on the loan, you own it. Okay. So you own that $63,000 and 20, $63,022.53, you own that. So you have to subtract that from 213 and then that gives us a net cost of living there, $150,000.27. Okay, so that's how much it costs to stay there for five years. Okay, so you compare that with Ken, or this is Randy, right? Right, this is Randy, and Ken paid 135. Okay, so we're gonna pay versus $135,000. Okay, so which was the better deal in the end? In this particular case, it paid for Ken to um, just rent because he paid less by $15,000, just over $15,000. All right, so this is um, how you would look at doing a question like this. Now, they're not really going to ask you this whole procedure on one question. Sometimes they just ask you for a little chunk of it. Okay, but this is how you could look at this question just by using the time value money application. Okay, and the web clip works just the same as the calculator. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this, for, the, for this one. It's a lot of calculations, but it's, there's a little bit of arithmetic and explanation in there that if you've not seen this before, especially with this transaction, um, it's not something that is readily avail readily there unless it's explained to you a little bit uh, more clearly. Okay, so hopefully this helps in terms of going over how you do this with the, with the application. Um, and in another video, I'm just gonna show the part of how they do the loan um, value. Okay, and, and how they do that mortgage table um, so that you'd have an idea of how to do that on a spreadsheet. But again, you wouldn't be asked to do the spreadsheet part on, um, on any quiz or test.